Dr. Katherine Smith, I'll be your moderator for this class session. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established brand schools throughout the United States and in certain other foreign countries. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit as contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the word our son is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that's made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. 
in like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consisted of a most holy place, holy place, and court roundabout. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. We go about in this school to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have ten primary aims or constitutional objectives of the Institute and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to escapate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation in faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is none other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan speak the truth. We have prayer by Dr. Olivia Dobbins. Our scripture lesson is Psalms, the 8th chapter, read by Dr. Catherine Smith. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Let's bow our hearts and minds for a moment of supplication unto Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh, whither can we go that we are not in your presence? Mm -hmm. Make us always mindful of this, Yahweh. In these tumultuous times, 
make us aware that all things were foreknown and foreplanned by you. Therefore, the sons of Jacob, which are now us, not Jacob after the flesh, but Jacob after the spirit, will not be consumed. For thou, Yahweh, alone are ever-changing and everlasting. So, Father, go before us, behind us, beside us, and in us. Strengthen us day by day as we see that great and terrible day coming faster than it was yesterday. All these things we ask in the name of your only begotten Son, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reading to you from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association. This was a reprinted uh, by Joshua's promotion in 2012. Psalms, the 8th chapter, page 680, Holy Name. O Yahweh, our sovereign, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling has thy ordained, ordained strength the cause of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the path of the seas. O Yahweh, our sovereign, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. I have read you Psalms, the 8th chapter from the Holy Name Bible. Let the body say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our first speaker for this morning's class will be Dr. Daphne Thomas. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Enjoyed the scripture lesson and the prayer. And I am truly um, thankful and grateful to be in class this morning that Yahweh saw fit to invite me and to uh, allow me to come. Hallelujah. Uh, because this is a privilege that is not afforded to everyone. And uh, so I do uh, appreciate it for the opportunity that it is. And it, it, it's an honor and a privilege to say anything about my Creator in truth and reality. Because I do know that I was lost. And I didn't know anything about Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. And to come down to one of these schools, you know, over 20 years ago, and for him to introduce himself to me in such an intimate way, he died in a body. <laughs> you know, and he wasn't above the sun, moon, and the stars. He got in a body and just came and said, hello, my name is Yahweh. Just like you do when you meet somebody. Hello, my name is Daphne. <laughs> he said, hello, my name is Yahweh. And I heard that name before. Back in 1991, 92, it wasn't, you know, broadcast like it is now. You know, but I'd heard it because someone had talked to me uh, that there was a secret in the world. The true name of God. It was one of the... Uh, Masonic secrets, mm -hmm. you know, and he was his dad, his granddad was like a 33rd degree Mason. Yes. And I was like, are you supposed to be talking about this stuff? You know, he told you. <laughs> you know, he said, yeah, granddaddy told me. He said, the big secret, once you get to the 33rd degree, is the name of God is Yahweh. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> and I said, well, okay, then, you know, man, I was like, all right, whatever, you know. And he started to talk about things that have happened in history, the, the Challenger shuttle. I heard that before I got down here. And he said how those two rocket boosters separated from the main uh, uh, part of the shuttle and went off to make that wide. We had that, 
that flame and tail going up. And that's how you had the why in the heavens that mm -hmm. day on that terrible day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I couldn't refute that. <laughs> you know? I was like, okay, that's, that's interesting. And, but I just put it aside. You know, this guy was, was a bit, people called him strange. And so I thought that was a strange thing to say. I came <laughs> up and coached it. You know, the name of God was God, and, and his name was the Lord. <laughs> and, you know, some weird folks who knocked on your door at the most <laughs> inopportune time would tell me it was Jehovah. And, you know, and so I, I when hearing Yahweh, I never heard it before, but I just said, you know, you just put a pen in that and be like, what up, man? And then next, you know, I come down to this class, and he gets to the body, and he says, oh, hello, my name is Yahweh. And the, the vessels took great pains to go into just the greatest detail about the power of a name. And I never gave it any thought before. You know, and we all grew up, if somebody called you out your name, the licks commenced. <laughs> you know, it's fighting words. You know, nobody used to call me out my name. The name was, your name was important to you, it's sacred. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you get besides a, you know, a pat on the behind when you get here and you get placed in your mother's arm, they're already working on, working up that uh, certificate of live birth. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're going to document, they already know your last name before you get here. Mm -hmm. When mama gets to the hospital in labor and she checks in, that's, that, okay, and, but, and, your last name and it's the father who's the father and they are already getting that together. So you had a name before you even mm -hmm. came on the scene. Mm -hmm. They said come through the, the, the matrix. You broke through. <laughs> you had a name. Mm -hmm. You know, your first name is your given name. I had to come down here to find out. Uh -huh. Your last name is your surname. Your last name is your first name. It's mm -hmm. the first name you got. Mm -hmm. And you come in your father's name. Mm -hmm. I never gave that. You know, I was a Sanders, never occurred to me, yeah, my dad is a Sanders, everybody knows that. <laughs> but the significance of it, Yahweh set all these things in motion for the glory of his name. In the, in the uh, scripture lesson, was so beautiful, how excellent mm -hmm. is thy name. Absolutely. And it's been in Psalms, mm -hmm. it's been, and it's throughout the book, mm -hmm. but I was never given the intelligent question that Moses asked him. <laughs> You know, I didn't have that question. I was fine with a title, God. Okay, I was fine. I was all right with the Lord. I didn't know it came from a British fuel system, and the Lord was used, and and that is not even the highest ranking mm -hmm. uh, right. mo uh, member of the monarchy. Right. The Lord, he's down. He's kind of down mm -hmm. there. He's a landowner. <laughs> you know, and that's all. That's all. He got land. And the king is the highest. So why didn't wherever they decide to replace Yahweh mm -hmm. rather than saying the Lord, why mm -hmm. didn't they call him the king? Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that was God would give me those questions. He gave me the answer first, it was like Jeopardy. You know, he give you an answer and then you go, Oh, what is his name? Mm -hmm. And to come down here to find out and they go, Oh, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, you would have thought if he is the creator. Mm -hmm. Of all things, he's the king of kings. Why didn't they use that title? Right. The king throughout the King James Version. Well, King James wasn't going to have that. He commissioned it to come down here to find out about the history of the Bible. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and Yahweh gave that man, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, a stupendous divine vision and revelation. And he taught us not to just Believe what we hear down here. He taught us to study, and it's in our aims, with comparative mm -hmm. religions, mm -hmm. psychology, mm -hmm. philosophy, mm -hmm. both modern practical. and practical and occult, occult science. science. Mm -hmm. He says study it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Yahweh created it all. Mm -hmm. And there's something to learn in all of it. And I said, okay. Because it's all talking about Yahweh, how he really is and actually exists. And I, we used to have a vessel that would lecture about, you know, on that great, and the previous vessel had prayed on that great and terrible day. Mm. And, then, and it said, you know, you standing at the door, what is the question? What's the secret knock? Mm -hmm. You know, 
what's going to be on the test. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, and it is not one of those nobody's grading on the curve. Mm -hmm. It's pass fail. Mm -hmm. Right. It's you're going to be a vessel of honor, vessel of dishonor. Mm -hmm. You're going into eternal glorification oh, or eternal, eternal damnation. damnation. There's no middle ground. There's no if, and, or buts. And, you know, I thought that was kind of harsh coming down here to the school. I was like, oh, so we the only ones that got the truth? Well, there's only one creator. There is only one truth. And people say, oh, there are many ways <laughs> had come down here. And he said, I am the way, the truth. And the life. And he put the in front of those things to denote that's the only way. Mm -hmm. I'm the only truth. Mm -hmm. And there is no life in any other but right. me. And so people come down to these little classes and they boldly stand there and beat the charts off the walls and say, yep, I said it. This is the truth. <laughs> And I'm still waiting since 1933 for somebody to refute it. I've been down here since 92. I can't refute it. I've surrendered to it. I, you know, I didn't put up a fight, really. I was just like, my Yahushua, I believe, because this is the, this stuff make more sense than anything I've ever seen or heard. And I said, okay, they started out with the name of Yahweh. Just simple stuff. Um, I heard before coming down here that, you know, in the future that you're going to have a barcode in your forehead, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, and getting it from Revelation. Revelation didn't confuse the whole lot. <laughs> heard all kind of stuff that come out of that apocalyptic book, you know, but it, it, and you can get over there, Doc, where it says in their uh, uh, hand and in their forehead. <laughs> This is the kind of stuff that they used to say back in the 80s, you know, when they used to say music, if you play it backwards, you hit the devil and all this old ignorance, you know. And they used to say and that that would be your mark and mm -hmm. everybody would have a barcode, there would be no more money and all this old stuff. And I said, well, where is this stuff coming from? And then and my mom told me, you know, she loves that Bible. She knows it come to come and reads it religiously. And she said, whatever you need to know, it's in that book. And all these things that are being said and all these little sayings that pop out of my mouth, she'll go over there and put her finger on it. It came out of the Bible. This is in the book. And I said, oh, okay. So that's where they get that stuff from, the forehead. And his name is in the forehead. I didn't hear that until I came down here. I said, okay, the name of the creator is on me. I look at it every morning. Revelation 13. Thank you. Revelation 13. I look at it every morning. And a, a vessel got on the floor and they said, okay, let's say the entire creation is a canvas and Yahweh is an artist. After the artist makes his masterpiece, or oh, it could be the worst thing he's mm -hmm. ever done. The last thing he's going to do is somewhere, is somewhere on there. Mm -hmm. If it's down here, way down here in the corner, he's going to put his signature, mm -hmm. his signet. His name to denote that he is the creator of that work, of that creation. So what more so than the creator of the heavens and the earth? And, and he said he created us just a little lower than the angels. But he bestowed upon us so much glory and grace and honor. What more so as the creator when he put his name on this creation, mm -hmm. the one that he gave dominion? Over all the creatures. And he took it and took the world to what? Subdue it. So why wouldn't he put his name on us? The vessel got up there and said that, and I said, We're the hmm. That makes perfect sense to me. Read over there. Revelation, Revelation 13 and 16. Mm -hmm. And he causeth all. Causeth all. Both small and great, mm -hmm. rich and poor, free oh. and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay, now listen, y'all. Now that's that's old talk in a sense. But he covered the waterfront with that. Especially when he did free and born. Mm -hmm. Old or rich and mm -hmm. poor. Mm -hmm. He and that meant no man is left out of that. Mm -hmm. Every man is gonna have this free. And that no man might buy or sell 
save he that had the mark mm -hmm. or the name of the idol of the beast or mm -hmm. the number of his name. Mm -hmm. See, even he, even he's talking about that. He's talking about the significance of a name. Now, the back in the back in the eighties, they took that to talk about. That's how you were gonna start paying for stuff mm -hmm. in your hand, and, yeah. and you know they're doing that now. Mm -hmm. That's a business mm -hmm. that their employees now have a little chip yep. right under mm -hmm. their skin, right. and they can go up to the vending machines and just wave their hand and mm -hmm. pay for their items, and it's automatically deducted mm -hmm. from their account via a little chip. They walk in the building, the little chip mm -hmm. is registered, and I said, oh. And people say, don't you feel intrusive? And they're just like, oh, no, I don't have a problem. It's so convenient. I said, well, Yahweh, you're so mad. It's convenient. But what Yahweh is showing us, that you know, there is a mark of the beast. And it, like he put a mark on Cain so that nobody would kill him when they came upon him. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he was a murderer. Mm -hmm. And you know that thing he did went throughout the world. And if somebody saw that they was, he didn't even knew, they would seek to slay me. And he put a mark on him. But Yahweh put his name on every one of his human creatures. And he said, my name is Yahweh. That's my name forever. And that's my memorial. And I said, okay, the name is Yahweh. But well, how can we prove that? Pre a vessel would get up on the floor. He said, you breathe it. With every breath, and then it's in the, he gets in, go get it in the book. Let every breath, every uh, thing. thing that hath breath, praise, praise Yahweh. Yahweh. He said, now what does that mean? So from the first breath you take when you get mm -hmm. here, they smack you, and that baby screams at first, he's got to take in the breath of life. Mm -hmm. He's not breathing oxygen in the womb. Mm -hmm. He's in a sack that's full of water. Mm -hmm. It's called amniotic fluid. Right. And that's the only time in your life you're able to survive in a state like that. Right. But once you come out and you take on the breath of life, you try to go on the water for nine months <laughs> and breathe. Okay? Once you take on the breath of life and that first breath is, <sighs> there's that yaw. And I heard people talk about when people expire. And you and and they know it's coming because their breathing changes and it takes on a certain rhythm. It say becomes labored. Mm -hmm. So every breath, <sighs> they're struggling to get that breath of life in there. It, it's it's all you know when people have gone through a long illness. It's not mm -hmm. something southern. A sudden death is taking a process. Mm -hmm. You can observe it mm -hmm. and say so they take that last breath. <sighs> mm -hmm. So you come in with a. A yah, and you go out with a mm -hmm. And he said, what? His name is Lord. To say Lord, you've got to take your tongue and you've got to flap it up mm -hmm. into the roof of your mouth. You, now, I don't know what these ventriloquists do and all of that, <laughs> but that's abnormal. But normally when you say Lord, that tongue has got to hit the roof of right. your mouth. Right. That, you don't breathe like that. When you have breath, you take in the breath of life, it, and you can't hear it normally, mm -hmm. but you exert yourself. I used to run track in junior high school, and we go play and all that old stuff, or you just let a bad dog get in behind you. <laughs> and you gonna hear it. <laughs> and not only that, you gonna feel it too. Oh, you gonna feel a burning. Morning. And that's another whole lecture, but you're gonna hear let everything have breath. So you breathe in the name mm -hmm. of Yahweh. You're not breathing Lord. Mm -hmm. You're not breathing Jesus. <laughs> you can't even do that. You would get to hyperventilating and pass out. Your oxygen levels would get so low trying to prove that. So even in your breath, you are saying his name. You are giving praise without even knowing it. That's why it's such a privilege to come down here and to be told. Did you know? With every breath you take, you will give me praise to my name. Hallelujah. I said, okay. Okay. Name is Yahweh. Okay. Can you tell me some more? Say that letter Y. Mm -hmm. That letter Y is a bad boy in nature. You know, this thing that they got going out now, going on now. And I bought a kit and I hadn't sent it off yet. I plan to do it. Uh, the, you know, the uh, 20... Three and me, mm -hmm. and uh, I bought. I think the one National Geographic, some genome two point project or whatever. So I read the pamphlet, and for women, you can send in your saliva, and they're gonna track your DNA, gonna map it, and track what regions 
and how your DNA wound up through Africa or the European continent or down into Asia. All they're gonna track it through your DNA. They said, but for men, they get an extra report because they also track that Y chromosome. And it gives them a whole nother realm of information mm -hmm. that as a woman I can't have because I don't have that Y. Because that Y is, the, is what makes them a man or a male. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I, we, we had um, genetics uh, and biology in high school. They didn't get deep into it. But they did t teach us about how the DNA strands, how the mother gives DNA or genetic material and the father gives genetic material and that her chromosomes are XX mm -hmm. and he has, he can give an X or a Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, because see, they're going to split. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's in it. We used to have a bell, so she do it. She's like, you just playing talk and you just got one card. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's all you can do is throw down an X. That's whether she split when you split those chromosomes because they unzip, they split. She's gonna give an X every time. But the man might, you might get the X side. That's mm -hmm. when you get your little girl like me. Mm -hmm. Or he might get that Y, and that's the denotes that male baby. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know. Mm -hmm. But how what scientists came up with that? <laughs> it, we got 26 alphabets. He could have chosen any one of them. Mm -hmm. Even the letter J, which is the last one added, he could have chosen and said, we're going to denote that chromosome, we're going to call mm -hmm. that the J. No. They, Yahweh, put his name on it, and they made that the Y chromosome to denote the male. Mm -hmm. Talking about the son mm -hmm. coming from his father. Okay? He said, now, and now that's all over the place. Once they map the genome, now you, they can map yours. You can mail it all, mm -hmm. get all kind of reports. Mm -hmm. And they're eating now, and that's the I did the National Geographic one because that was contributing to science. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to map how we all came to be. I promise you, people, they're really trying to figure out how we got here, where mm -hmm. we came from. Mm -hmm. And we get on this floor, and we just play with it. You know, <laughs> our origin uh -huh. is our destination. Uh -huh. We are of the earth, earthy, mm -hmm. but our home is with what Yahweh. We play with these things. They are trying their best to put their finger on it and to say, yes, this is where man <laughs> came from. Why do you think we're going to the heavens? Mm -hmm. They're not just out there just taking pictures of stars and right. supernovas and, and, <laughs> and examining Saturn's rings and, and <laughs> crashing Cassini into Saturn and all this mm -hmm. old stuff. They're trying to find out where we came from and they're trying to find God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we come down here, and, and Yahweh, they're looking among the sun, moon, and stars, mm -hmm. and he's in bodies. And he'll walk up to you. And mm -hmm. people used to say that. You entertain angels unawares. Mm -hmm. I had to come down here to find out what that really meant. Mm -hmm. That Yahweh would get in the body and literally just say, how you doing? My name is Yahweh. Let me prove to you how that is. What got me was over there when it said over there in Revelation 13 about in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. I had to come down here to understand that my forehead wasn't the top third of it. You know, that's what we call this. And mine is more prominent than most. But they still, they, we call it the forehead. I had to come down here to find four means front. So this whole, my whole face mm -hmm. is my forehead. It's the front of my head. This is the back of my head. Mm -hmm. So, okay. He said, your name is in his forehead. You know, I'm thinking, I don't see... Yahweh across my forehead and no four means front, but it's here. Mm -hmm. Your eyebrows and your nose make that Y. It's undeniable. And that A, it's a, when you see um, um, skeletons, you see that triangle mm -hmm. right there. You see mm -hmm. that A right mm -hmm. there. Right. And then we've got this, and, and I, I like to watch uh, one of these shows about plastic surgery, and the one of these guys is considered the best rhinoplastic surgeon in the country and he specializes in noses and he's always talking about the septum and every time he talks I'm just like ooh we because that's that little flap there mm -hmm. they call he says all these folks have deviated septums you know they're going this way uh -huh. they're going that way they got a hole in them but 
the septum is always, always talking about that. And that's just, and it doesn't seem necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems arbitrary and it's superfluous, but everybody's got one. <laughs> and they want it to look right. <laughs> and if it ain't right, if it's deviated, if it's over to the left, it affects your what? Breathing. So it's just that little flap right here. And when you look at that, it makes an E. Mm -hmm. I said, wow. So you got your Y, Y, you got your A, because this is an opening here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a bone that separates it. That's that's cartilage that does that. Right. So that's an opening. There's your A, your W, you have that bow in your lips. That's what, you know, and we women, when we really want to paint, Mm -hmm. Our faces, we'll get the lip pencil make and we'll one. trace that bow. <laughs> we'll make accentuate it and make that Y. Y and your H. The older you get, it gets more mm -hmm. pronounced. Right. Those are called smile lines. They got mm -hmm. wrestling and all kind of stuff. They get in there and try to fill in your H. Because mm -hmm. it's showing your years. <laughs> yeah. They know the older you get, the more that H mm -hmm. comes out. That Y, that A. That H, mm -hmm. that W, and the mm -hmm. bow of the lips, mm -hmm. that E with that little septum there that seems so superfluous. And even if and you, and if you don't even do the way, and then you know you got your H, mm -hmm. it, the, the Yah, he said, I am Yah. There is none else. Mm -hmm. There is none beside me. So when they, and they told me, okay, Yahweh is the creator, he's like an artist who signed his creation. It is on your forehead. Your forehead is the front of your face. And I look at my face. It's undeniable. Mm -hmm. I don't see a J anywhere. Mm -hmm. No J for Jesus. No J for Jehovah. Then I had to find out that the letter J is the last letter added. Mm -hmm. But it's in like the 10th position. Mm -hmm. So it slid and skipped line. <laughs> and then that's based because it comes from the letter I. Mm -hmm. This is this this is this comes from books that we don't write. Encyclopedias. Mm -hmm. Now it's in your pocket. It's on your phone. You just look up the origin of the letter J. It'll tell you. It'll take you all the way back to the Phoenicians and mm -hmm. all that old stuff. And the I and the J was just a really a fancy mm -hmm. I. Mm -hmm. It didn't even have that J sound. Right. And to this day, you look at Israelis. They've got they've got Israelis named Yahashua. And I said nobody ever asked that. Mm -hmm. I've seen them on TV, Yahashua. I said, wow. And they're called, their name, their proper name is Yehudas. Didn't know that. Had to come down here and find out about culture. Mm -hmm. Because we, it's just, it's a mystery that's been hidden from ages and from generations. Now you've got Hebrews who know the name is mm -hmm. Yahweh. They won't even utter it. Mm -hmm. And consider it too sacred mm -hmm. to utter. But Yahweh said, this is my name forever. It will endure right. as long yes. as the sun. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hebrews, it comes from the tetragrammaton. Mm -hmm. Y-H-W-H. Mm -hmm. Tetra means four. Mm -hmm. Grammaton meaning letters. Mm -hmm. Four letters. They didn't have vowels in their writings, in their language. So it was yod he wah -Hey. And the A and the H are placed there to make it pronounceable. But let's get Exodus because this name is so important. And that's what the scripture lesson was talking about. It started out with, oh, Yahweh, how excellent is thy name. Exodus 3 and Yes, yeah, get to Moses where he's at the burning bush because he asked a question. I, I, I don't think I've had enough sense to ask. I know all, he, all that, that was going on, the burning bush would have thrown me. Exodus 3 and 13. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Elohim, mm -hmm. Behold, mm -hmm. when I come unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and shall say unto them, mm -hmm. The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you. Now he said, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you. Read. And they shall say unto me, mm -hmm. What is his name? So that means Elohim is not a name. Oh, I had to come down here and find out that Elohim is a title, but it is a divine title because it is the title that Yahweh chose for himself. So even Moses hearing that, and they called him, he was known as El Shaddai, mm -hmm. Almighty Provider. Those are descriptive titles, just like the father, the mother, the aunt, the brother. 
you know, back in the old days, that's how a lot of people would call their fam brother, sister, you know, well, you know, sis, by their titles. Mm -hmm. But they had, they had names. They had surnames, the last name, which was their first name, and they had given names. But they were, their descriptions, they were known by a lot of times, you know. I didn't know my mama's name for a minute, <laughs> you know, and I, I, she had to tell me when you go to school and somebody said, what's your mama's name? It ain't mama. My name is Jerry. Oh, okay. Okay. So my mom had to learn that mama was a name. My mother has a name. Mm -hmm. So he knows that Elohim is not a name. It's a title. So now when I go down there and they say Elohim did all this in Sydney, and how did he even get there? He was there by divine vision. Mm -hmm. His Every step of his life from his birth was divinely ordered. Even to the point of him being born under a death decree and just placed out there. So you're born, how are you born under a death sentence? Mm -hmm. The minute you get here, they're supposed to kill you on the birthing stool. And Yahweh has puts the fear in those um, um, uh, midwives. They're like, I don't care what the Pharaoh <laughs> say. Now, you know that's some fear mm -hmm. of Yahweh. And they didn't kill that baby. And she hid him. And then they, when he started getting big, and of course, that meant he started getting loud. She couldn't mm -hmm. keep hiding. So she just, Yahweh, I'm going to have to put him in your hands and put him in an ark. And place him at the flags. He wasn't floating down the river. He was just right there at the bank. And here comes Pharaoh's daughter, mm -hmm. a princess of mm -hmm. Egypt, coming to bathe that old muddy now. Why? Because <laughs> it was considered a goddess of fertility. Mm -hmm. And so when she sees the ark, go oh, get that. And they open it, and it's a baby in there. Mm -hmm. She feels like mm -hmm. the now goddess has blessed her mm -hmm. with a child. Mm -hmm. Even though her daddy said, Hebrew babies, all male Hebrew babies die. Mm -hmm. she, now this is this is from the Nile goddess. I'm taking this home. And she, could she when she opened it and saw him, she knew it was a Hebrew baby on mm -hmm. site. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the law of circumcision. She didn't have to ask nobody. So when little Miriam came up, the little Hebrew girl, she's go get somebody to nurse this baby. She hadn't had any children. She had no milk to give it. So she went and got the baby's mother. Mm -hmm. And so everything in his life was divinely ordered. So now he's out here, and he's keeping Jethro's flock. His father-in-law, he didn't even own anything of his own. He's keeping his wife's daddy's sheep. And he all of a sudden, he sees a bush that's burning, but it's not consumed. And people say, well, you know, those are allegories in the Bible. I said, man, I came down here, Yahweh getting bodies and get on this floor and said, let me tell you about an allegory. Mm -hmm. Let's look at science. Let's look at something concrete. There's a bush that's burning mm -hmm. right there in Exodus and it's not being consumed. Yes, Moses is having a vision. Mm -hmm. It happened. He had a vision. Let's talk about a burning bush then. Because y'all is our overturn, overturn and what? Overturn it. You have a burning bush in your body. I know they took mine. It's called your gallbladder. Mm -hmm. And it sits on the back side of your liver. Mm -hmm. And your liver is the largest organ in your body. It takes mm -hmm. up nearly almost all of your midsection. Mm -hmm. After your intestines, that liver is huge. And they call it the liver because you can't make it without it. Mm -hmm. And it has three lobes. It's a big lobe. Four. It's four lobes. And it has the two lower, the two um, smaller lobes, and almost like the way a mountain is. The mountain has mm -hmm. your, you know, your peak, and then it has your little plateaus, mm -hmm. and then it has the lower right. levels. Mm -hmm. And so, on the back side, and he could have been on any side of the mountain mm -hmm. and saw that vision, but he was on the back side of the mountain. Well, in your body, around the back of your liver is your gallbladder. Mm -hmm. And it is a literally a bush that burns and is mm -hmm. not consumed mm -hmm. because it contains bile at all times. Bile is caustic. In other words, it is corrosive. It acts like an acid. It is designed to break down tissue. Why? Because when you eat a, a heavy meal or, or, or eat a light meal, there's going to be a signal from the brain, from the liver. It's going to come down through those ducts. 
and it's going to secrete that bile and put it into the intestines to literally break that food down to its lowest forms. Okay, now if it can break down a steak, how come that bile doesn't break down the gallbladder? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's a bush that's burning. It's on fire constantly, mm -hmm. but it's not consumed. Why? Because Yahweh has it to sec constantly secrete a mucus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that coats the inside of it at all times. Mm -hmm. And that bile just sits there and it causes no damage mm -hmm. until you get gallbladder disease. <laughs> <laughs> And then you talk about some burning that's going on. And the old people used to say that, you know, they, well, we call it GERD, you know, gastro, uh, mm -hmm. enteritis, and reflux disease, and all this old stuff. They used to say, ooh, it tastes a little gall. Mm -hmm. You know, they get a bad meal and they come back mm -hmm. up the wrong mm -hmm. way, and it gets bitter. Mm -hmm. And they say that mm -hmm. gall taste. Ugh. You know, that, that's from the bladder, okay? The gallbladder. And so, that, and I said, you know what, these people, Yahweh is showing me that he is real, he is on the throne, and there is nothing mm -hmm. haphazard. Just like the, the a vessel when she prayed, everything is preordained. So Moses, every step he took, he had to step around to the backside of the mouth because Yahweh knew hundreds of years later, somebody's going to have to get up on the floor and say, yeah, it happened, because you got a burning bush on the backside of right. your liver. Then you got another, you know, let me get back to Moses. So now he's going around there and he has this vision. And he is communing with Yahweh. He's having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is showing him miracles to prove to him he is who he is. So he said, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, sure, I believe. I can't even complain. I can't talk. I can't do all this stuff. He said, okay, I'm going. Now when I get down there mm -hmm. and I tell them Elohim, them folks going to ask me, well, who, what's his name? Because I'm going to Egypt where they have a pantheon of gods. And all their gods have names. Horus. Mm -hmm. All of, uh, of, 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 shoot, the sun god Ra. Mm -hmm. They all have names. So when I go down there, I'm talking about this, this Elohim I saw. They're going to say, well, what is his name? Read on. What is... And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and shall say unto them, mm -hmm. The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you. Right. And they shall say to me, What is his name? Mm -hmm. What shall I say unto them? Read. And Elohim said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Ayah, Asher, Ayah. Is that a name? No. That's a description of his power. Ayah, Asher, Ayah. I will be what or that or how I will to be. That's still not a name. Read on. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel. He goes on. Read. I will be hath sent me unto you. That's still not a name. Read. And Elohim said, Moreover More unto Moses. Moreover. And. Read. Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Yahweh. Yahweh. Now over in the King James uh, Version, it says, um, Oh, I don't have my King James. But it doesn't say Yahweh. The Lord God. It says the Lord God. Mm -hmm. Now, I had to come down here to find out that Lord is a title. Mm -hmm. It came from the feudal system set up back in those days in Britain. And, and that King James was the one that commissioned the, the translation of the King James Bible from. And it was translated from the Greek. So they inserted wherever where they saw Yod Hey Wah Hey, because that's what they saw. The Y H W H, these little characters up here in Hebrew, that's where they saw Yahweh in the text. And then it but they translated from the Greek. So wherever Yahweh was supposed to be, they put in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even over there to this day, you have a, a house of lords and a house of commons, but everybody up in there mm -hmm. got a name. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, in, so in the King James Version, the Lord God, then you come down here and you find out that God is a title. Mm -hmm. And even when you look up the, the etymology of the word God, it'll take you back to Gott, mm -hmm. the German, mm -hmm. and all the way back to Assyrian God, G-A-W-D. And you right. hear folks say, thank oh, God. God. <laughs> you know, and you, so, you have, you, so you got Babylon, Assyria, Germany up in there. But neither one of those things are a name. 
And so that, and Moses should have stood right there mm -hmm. if it was up to the King James Version. Just said, okay. Mm -hmm. And moreover, because the Lord God is not a name either. But when you have the correct mm -hmm. name mm -hmm. and title, it makes sense. Read on. And Elohim said, Moreover unto Moses, mm -hmm. Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, mm -hmm. the Elohim of Abraham, mm -hmm. the Elohim of Isaac, mm -hmm. and the Elohim of Jacob mm -hmm. has sent me unto you. Mm -hmm. This is my name forever, mm -hmm. and this is my memorial unto all generations. All generations. We're still generating. Is somebody having a baby right now? Again. <laughs> Guaranteed. Let's say it written. There's more than one person. <laughs> right now. And then over there, I think it's in the Psalms. He said, My name will endure forever. And then you come down here in this day and age, and people just scoff. Oh, that's that old Hebrew name. But that's not what he called it. He said, My name is my memorial. And it will endure forever. And in another place, it will endure as long as the sun. Well, uh, it's daylight. There's something like that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that means the sun came up today. Mm -hmm. So his name is still Yahweh. And everything in creation points to that. You look at the trees. Mm -hmm. From the little, and we, and we did that, uh, we went over to uh, some classmates' house in Senatobia. And, you know, they live in the country, so they got tomato plants and seven dust everywhere. You know, they mm -hmm. plant stuff. We city folk, we don't do that. You know, we might have a philodendron. Somewhere in here, but they're planting food. Yep. And so they had all of their little little plantlings, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. seedlings, mm -hmm. and these little milk carton things that they had, you know, planted because right. they were going to transplant them. Right. They were getting a head start indoors. And so everybody was just over there, just marveling, looking at these little bitty plants that they had come up in these little cartons or these little. Uh, sometimes people put them in the egg crates and all right. this all kind of stuff. And it was like, more outside folk would think we were crazy by marveling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at these little bitty two-inch plants. But what we were looking at was Yahweh. Because when, it, I don't know why they made us do this in school, but they, I don't know if they do it anymore. But when I was coming up, we all had to bring butter beans to school. Because we were in, a, in, a little, in our little milk cartons, because right. you know, you used to have breaks back then, and you go and you get your chocolate right. milk, and we would save our little milk carton, and we tear the top off of it, right. and we put our soil in it, and you get your butter bean, and you put it down and then water it, and in a few days, something would come up, and that little husk would even emerge sometimes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it'd be just, you know, sitting on top of this, the little plant. But in the fullness of time, and it didn't take long, and they all came, we planted them all at the same time, they all came up at the same time. <laughs> that was just amazing to me. they come up, and you'd get this one stalk. You know, this is your, your dirt. And they would put off two shoots mm -hmm. every time. That's your little, your little plant. Mm -hmm. That our little butter bean that we all planted, and we all did it. It's like second grade. And so... I come down here 20 years later to find out <laughs> Yahweh had that in the curriculum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for his name's sake. So Yahweh. you get to see firsthand when a mm -hmm. plant comes up, mm -hmm. the first thing he's going to do is praise, praise Yahweh. Yahweh and send off those mm -hmm. two shoots. They don't send off three. They That's don't right. send off four. They sent off two. And then those things, they sent off offshoots. Off of those mm -hmm. two main stems, and they all make them wise. Mm -hmm. And then you get all your little leaves, and you can look at the veins in the leaves, mm -hmm. and they're making wise. I don't see any J's <laughs> when I look at a tree. Yeah, that man who started all, whoever started Arbor Day, they wrote that little poem of never seen anything as lovely as a tree. <laughs> Yahweh made him write that. Mm -hmm. He was marveling at the beauty of, you know, we just, if you, it, it, Yahweh has to put that in you, because otherwise it's just a tree. But he saw something be so beautiful and elegant in the tree, he, we had come down here and Yahweh showed us, yeah, he sees me. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you see, in trees, I have a huge oak tree and it has boughs in it. And you know, there are times when tree trimmers come out, and this really gets me. You know, when your tree starts to really to mature, mm -hmm. there are certain branches that come off it not quite right. Mm -hmm. And they come off at the wrong angle. Mm -hmm. 
they come off almost at a right angle, mm -hmm. like that. And he said, man, when you get them, you need to cut that. Mm -hmm. You need to cut them. All those ones that's coming out almost perpendicular to the mm -hmm. trunk, mm -hmm. you need to keep them. Mm -hmm. Now, the ones that are coming up like that, yeah. we're going to keep those. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking, y'all, you know, you tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you prune your, you have to prune those trees because if you don't, it will not be able to bear its own weight mm -hmm. at that angle. Mm -hmm. You allow it to mature and get leaves and more branches. It's going to get too heavy and it's going to come down anyway. Mm -hmm. You say, man, we need to cut that on off. Because mm -hmm. it's going to come down on something. Mm -hmm. I said, Yahweh, you are something else. So, everything in the universe testifies to the name okay. of Yahweh. And, then, and, then, and, and we don't go into it a lot. But it's everything. Mm -hmm. When you tell someone, you know, and, I, and for a living, I have to meet a lot of people. And the first thing I catch, hello, my name is Daphne. You don't say much else before you say that if you do, you don't have good manners. Mm -hmm. You know, you introduce yourself. And that's what Yahweh used to do, come down to this class and people would labor. We even had a, a tree limb in the classroom mm -hmm. drawer where the readers <laughs> were. They put it out. <laughs> And they cut off and it was made a perfect white. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, Yahweh. And then they said, what are we? Just look at you. Look at your mm -hmm. hand. We used to say that was the M for money. They said, look at you. And I see all the branches coming off of it. Mm -hmm. Making just an endless system of Y's. Then they said, if you could see your circulatory system in your body, it just, it, it all branches off in Y's. Mm -hmm. It branches off in wise. There's only one place in the body will come into a circle. And that's in, the, in your head cavity. That arterial circle of willis. But everywhere else is branching off. Even all the way to your little fingertips. Mm -hmm. And so do your nerves follow that. And I said, you know what, Yahweh, and you got a major branch right here in your chest. Mm -hmm. And it looks like an upside down Y. Mm -hmm. And it's there. And in the middle of it, you have to call it mediastinum. And if you got your arba vitae, right there, a tree in the midst. Right here in the middle of your chest. Yahweh is real. When he said his name, this is my name forever. Mm -hmm. People, you see, you can call him what you want. Can anybody call you what they want to call you? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. And if you, and my paycheck has the wrong <laughs> name on it. We got problems. Well, Daphne, just take it down, Dad. They'll give you the money. I ain't, I'm not going anywhere until we get that right. See, that's what we, we get real serious about a the name then. So what more so should we be serious about the name of our Creator? Yahweh. And the name of His Son and the only name that we can be saved in is Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, nowadays we make up our children's name. We call them all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just we're spelling it phonetically, you know, just all kinds of stuff. <laughs> 18 syllables. Back in the old days, names had meanings. Mm -hmm. And they signify who your father was. Mm -hmm. So when the angel Gabriel came to um to um yeah. Miriam. And told her she was blessed among women and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, the Catholic Church focuses on that part. They don't focus on the part of him saying, in his name. Right, right. right. <laughs> they don't not talk about that. They bless her among women and then the fruit of thy womb. And they, and you, they just repeat that by rope, you know. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever goes on mm -hmm. and say, and you shall call his name. Yahshua, mm -hmm. because there's a colon there, mm -hmm. because what's coming after the colon is going to explain what was right in front of it. You shall call his name Yahshua, colon, for he shall save his people. Mm -hmm. So Yahshua, Yah, denoting who his father is, mm -hmm. Yahweh, mm -hmm. the masculine portion of Yahweh, the Yah, so he's coming in his father's name, just like I came in mine. Mm -hmm. Coming, I came out of the womb, I was baby Sanders, until they said, oh, and we're going to call her Daphne. But I was baby Sanders. So he came out, before he came on the scene, he had his surname, mm -hmm. and it was Yah. And the Shua, Shua in Hebrew means 
salvation. So when the angel said that to her, you will call him. And she, you know, he had some nerve. She couldn't even name her own baby. <laughs> That's a privilege. You think parents, you know, mm -hmm. we guard that. I didn't hand you babies, but that's a serious thing. But he told her, yeah, you're going to have a baby. It's going to be a boy. Mm -hmm. And you will call him Yahshua, sure. for he shall save his, his people. Yahshua means Yahweh mm -hmm. is salvation. Yahweh Hoshua. Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh saves. So when he says this is the only name mm -hmm. that you can be saved in, that's what he means. Mm -hmm. So I'm so thankful to be able to come down here. Just the simple things. Mm -hmm. We can get yay, <laughs> say, yay deep, deep things in y'all. Well, we can get all up in there. We can. We can talk about some stuff that would really confound the world. And this little big school, y'all, we gave that man such a stupendous vision. Mm -hmm. And he's been preaching he, even when he took off the flesh in the seven, is it didn't stop? Mm -hmm. That's the miracle. That is the miracle that his gospel goes on, lives mm -hmm. on, in the fruit mm -hmm. that he bore. Okay, just like our little butter beans, we plant them and we just all enamored with our two little shoots. Mm -hmm. And the class is still looking at the plants because they all got their two little shoots. Saying, you know, Yahweh is, you know, holding this unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And we understand what that mm -hmm. manifestation mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Just like that, Yahweh gave that man a stupendous vision. Mm -hmm. And that vision lives. Mm -hmm. Those plants, if, they, if we treat them right, <laughs> nurture them, <laughs> put them in the right soil, in the right conditions, <laughs> they will grow up and then they will have more offspring or more seeds or more butter beans would come from that. Well, that's what happened. He made a whole bunch of butter beans. And these butter beans are steady generating and steady preaching. Mm -hmm. That the only name that you can be saved in is Yahshua, the Messiah. And we can boldly say that because the entire creation preaches it far better than we ever could. Everything you look at, your whole body, from your face to your hands, mm -hmm. you know, in the back you say, ooh, you know, my feet, my hands look new and my feet did too. And we can definitely say that. We don't look at ourselves the same because we see Yahweh mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. We and, and you can't listen, you had a TV in three rooms away. And some could pop up in your ears with automatically perk up like little yeah. satellite dishes. Like, mm -hmm. what was that? You are attuned mm -hmm. to Yahweh. And so that's the power of this gospel. It's not about a man. Mm -hmm. If it were about a man, it couldn't endure. It just couldn't. It couldn't endure. We could not continue to stand here and boldly preach the truth and dare anybody to prove us mm -hmm. wrong. That's the other thing. That's really mm -hmm. arrogant, you know. <laughs> but it's just it, as the children say nowadays, they get on my nerves with it, but it is what it, it is. is. <laughs> and that's all it is. So I'm so thankful that Yahweh is so fit to introduce me to his true name mm -hmm. and the name of his son. And let's get this one last scripture. I'll be down over there when it says a uh, who. I think it's in, is that in Proverbs? Mm -hmm. Who did this and who did that? Mm -hmm. Because the last thing they're going to ask is where the, where's the old folks say, what well, a rough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And this is the kind of stuff that has been in the book forever. All the years I went to church, they didn't read this. I didn't even know it was in the book that, that when they asked those questions, and the last one they asked was the most profound. <laughs> Proverbs 3 read, and 4. Read it. Who hath ascended up mm -hmm. into heaven? Okay, so who's been to heaven? Read. Or descend? Who came down from heaven? Read. Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? In his fist. Read. Who hath bound the waters in a garden? Oh my goodness. Now you know that's impossible. 70% of the mm -hmm. of the world is water. Mm -hmm. And you gonna bound them up in a garment? <laughs> Read. Who? Hath established all the ends of the earth. Okay, now we're talking about the Creator at this point, because you know no man could do it. And, and, uh, what he's asking, no man is able to do. Read. What 
is his name. Okay, now we're talking about the creator. We've established that. So now the mm -hmm. operative question is, what is his name? And, and what is his son's name if thou knowest it? Now, y'all, <laughs> what that got to do with it? That's what you asked me. So what does his son's name have to do with this? Mm -hmm. It's everything. Because that he is the that is the mm -hmm. only way mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. be saved. Mm -hmm. So when the, when the uh, vessels when I was coming up and say, okay now, what's gonna be on the test? <laughs> what's the secret knock? You knock at the door and they, and they want that cold word. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, the only answer mm -hmm. is past fail is Yashua. Mm -hmm. I hope something was said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our next speaker will be Dr. Olivia Dobbins. I'd like to say good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And, uh, you know, you, you uh, how, what can you say? Uh, <laughs> macro and micro. Okay. Uh, the, the big, the macro, mm -hmm. uh, the micro, the little. Mm -hmm. Or I might have it reversed. Mm -hmm, you're right. Uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> we can look at the thing from the from the elevated view, and then sometimes from the from the small view. Uh, but this morning I said, "Oh yeah, wait. If I speak, what will I say? What will I say? Which way will I go? Which way will I go?" Uh, and and I mean, I couldn't I couldn't buy a vow. <laughs> was so quiet within. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. You know, that sometimes you can, and we can, we mm -hmm. can, you know, not brag, we, we can call down fire. Yeah. And <laughs> the things that Yahweh has revealed unto us mm -hmm. will just stump the world. Yeah. Just stump them. But the voice said, Keep, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. For me, it is, it is the simple things. I listen to um, Yashuans giving glory. I like listening to them read. And for, for um, you know, when you go to different sites, it'll, it'll take you to some more of their work. Wow. Well, this morning it took me to uh, something from another class, and it, and it was the 1958 video of Dr. Kinley preaching. So I said, oh, I get to, I get to hear uh, Dr. Kinley himself. You know, I was raised up listening to the tape. So yeah. just just hearing uh, his voice. And uh, he was very, very slow and meticulous because he was making this making this video. Uh, but the, what it was putting me in mind of is that the inflections that he put on certain words. Mm -hmm. And he just emphasized it was just the utter simplicity, the one, two, three mm -hmm. of everything. And how that, you know, just that would confine the world. Because they'll tell you, oh yeah, everything comes in threes. The first time I heard that and became aware of it <laughs> right. was when uh, a, a, a star would die. You know, and people would say, Ooh, you know everything coming three. You know, it just it just went on past me. You know, cause it's like, oh, okay. You know, everything coming threes. But see, down here we know. You know, there's sometimes Yahweh. You know, when we say the, the prophecies are fail. I mean, it'd be like one, two. You looking for that third one, and then Yahweh just double up on you. Three, four, five, six. Still a bunch. You say, where's Yahweh? Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. But you know, all all of this is is coming in the threes and uh, the, the uh, moderate moderation says that absolutely nothing mm. escapes the pattern I started started holler out of scriptures I was coming up I knew I'd forget it uh, Deuteronomy okay. 14 and 2 and it is an honor mm -hmm. and a privilege you know sometimes talking with the brother and they say how many y'all. Okay, for the record. <laughs> when we started out down here, we had about 10. <laughs> we could have been, we could have petitioned for a satellite. Yeah. Uh, and, and that question was 
was a, uh, was brought up about you know uh, why we say the moderation are we are we a, a licensed class yeah. or stuff you know but uh, we are down here because we want to teach the unadulterated truth That's right. That's right. Uh, and and we were listening to the vessel was visiting in Springfield and it talked about the story about that prophet Yahweh told him precisely what he should do. You go there and you say this and you get out of town. Mm -hmm. When he got down there, this other man said, well, I'm a prophet too. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh told me to tell you. <laughs> See, that's where we get into trouble. <laughs> and he listened to him and Yahweh had something waiting for his disobedience yeah. down the road. Mm -hmm. So, wh what are we? We all have membership in or had membership in IDMR. Uh, classes here mm -hmm. in the Memphis area and for obvious reasons when, when we could not preach the truth we just started tipping away mm -hmm. as Richard Price say tip away <laughs> yeah <laughs> and have come together so now it's about down to five mm -hmm. and uh, as some of the vessels say don't worry about that because in some of these classes it's, only, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's five or six or ten mm -hmm. So uh, that are holding on to the truth because mm -hmm. the majority, mm -hmm. uh, we always said that that we were the the minority, we were oh, the yeah. remnant. Yes, and the world was the big piece of garment. Now we see that even among the banner of IDMR, mm -hmm. that there is a remnant, mm -hmm. and he has mm -hmm. saved that remnant. Mm -hmm. So it is an honor and a privilege to be able to testify the things that Yahweh has revealed unto me mm -hmm. since being in attendance in the school. And it was just refreshing mm -hmm. to listen to that uh, recording of Dr. Kinley because sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you as, as I, I look at some of uh, my, my uh, peer deans and stuff mm -hmm. um, that we getting up there and then you be wondering, ooh, damn, is my memory slipping? <laughs> <laughs> so you go back and you listen and and uh, it's refreshing that, no, I ain't, I ain't lost it yet. <laughs> I still can remember some of the things and how that Yahweh brought it out. Yeah. Okay, the vessel, I'm going to pick up where the vessel left off. And um, uh, the vessel was talking about going down there and sitting around these people's house. And, and it was. And we laughed about it. They had the starter trays mm -hmm. on, their, on their coffee table. And we in the sunroom. And we standing around the coffee table looking and talking and laughing and looking. Now, it would make sense if there were eggs hatching or something, you know? <laughs> that there would be some movement. Yeah. But we're just standing there looking. And look and and and, and uh we ain't got time lapse photography eyes. So we just looking. And we say, there's one right there. It's still all rolled up. Yeah, and it's got a hat on. The best we talked about that bus. <laughs> Her sitting up there. It's, it's just all it's just all tied up. And they had them by the times they were planted. So some of the other ones, they had begin to uncurl, but there's still it's just like a stalk and a head on it. And we just looking. And we laughed because we said. If someone other than us came in that room mm -hmm. and saw us looking at <laughs> stagnant plants on a coffee table, they would tip away and say, I told you there was something wrong with that. I told you it was something wrong with that. One wrap too tight. They watching, what does they say? You know, old folks just say, watch grass grow. That's what we were watching. But we was in the right place. Mm -hmm. Now, what does what does uh, Deuteronomy there say? Fourteen and two. For thou art an holy people we unto are Yahweh. We are people unto who? Yahweh. Unto Yahweh. That's what we need to get our certification from, and that's the problem. I I can't believe. I cannot believe that all of our brethren have abandoned the faith simply because they're confused. Mm -hmm. They want that attaboy from people in authority. Well, the only attaboy we should want is from Yahweh Himself. Absolutely. Now start that again. 
For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh. That's thy the only thing we yeah. need to be held accountable to it. So you want to know why I meant for side classes aside? Because read that again. <laughs> for thou art an holy people unto Yahweh, thy Elohim. That, because we are holy people unto Yahweh, our Elohim. And we That's remember right. exactly what Yahweh mm -hmm. said. Yeah. And we're not going to mm -hmm. change up what Yahweh mm -hmm. said and go down the road. Right. And the next scripture said, and a lion met him. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. We know what, you know, the, the punishment is too yeah. great. Not that, yeah. not that we yeah. even yeah. think about going that right. way. Read. And Yahweh hath chosen thee yeah. to be a peculiar people. Oh my people. goodness. Now look, uh, I had printed off something from Dr. Kinley's uh, vision where he said Yahweh foreknew. Ooh. Read that. Hold, hold that. And then read, read, the, read the thing from the panoramic vision. It is of this revelation. A revelation had to be revealed. And folk is still. We still. And, and, and I'm not fussing because mm -hmm. we all have to come to yes. this knowledge and the light bulb come on mm -hmm. and you just, oh, Yahweh, it just, it just take him. See, he's constantly, he's, he's, if he just showed it all at once and we get, because you know how we get, mm -hmm. been Lord. there, done that, got a t-shirt. He's just constantly <laughs> have to reveal. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Kelly was talking about that bud. On the, th on the third day, the waters rolled back. The seed of vegetation came forth, and it went on into, into bud mm -hmm. state. And mm -hmm. talked about how in that bud, aren't we anticipating? We're not just anticipating and getting excited about an old bud. No. We know it's something oh. in the bud. Right. So then, and then what? When it opens, I have roses. I, I love the way they come out. And then we just watch the petals. Start to unfurling yeah. as it goes into its, its into its full bloom, and that's what Yahweh's doing. He's just peeling it back, peeling it back, peeling it back, showing us uh, just little glimpses of His greatness. So this is gonna be one of those things that we just holler about. Oh, how great you are, Yahweh! Right. Read. It is of this revelation and the wisdom. Thus imparted to the writer during this his experience. This was imparted to the writer during this experience. What experience? The experience that he had, and I'm pointing up here, the experience that he had of that great panoramic vision. Well, and it's just it's just stupendous. I ask you again, just go back mm -hmm. and read it and listen mm -hmm. and li and 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 form the words in your mouth. Just not speed read, Evelyn Wood right. had speed read. Right. Let the words take on a shape and a form there. Mm -hmm. That he, he was experiencing mm -hmm. that vision with all of his being because he says he felt the children of Israel right. as they came here to the mount. And then he says that there were lesser souls, but then he felt another approaching unto him that was more like it than unto him that was he felt Moses mm -hmm. go up into Mount Sinai mm -hmm. to have that great vision now 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 you want to know who ought to know the mind of Yahweh mm -hmm. is, is that man that man that had that kind of close encounter with Yahweh mm -hmm. Ain't none of us had that much of a close encounter so we ought to take heed to what that man mm -hmm. said whether we can understand it uh, uh, or not. Sometimes just put a pin in it. Y'all will take you there. Read. When the astral man. What is the astral man? And I used to tell the elders. Dr. Kennedy used that term. And we're afraid to use that term. Mm -hmm. There is a man within a man. Mm -hmm. and, and in that mm -hmm. 1958 uh, yeah. tape. He was, he was talking about. That there, uh, he said, he was the same thing we had gone through in our last class about let this mind be in you or let this spirit be in you. Mm -hmm. He was saying that mind and spirit mm -hmm. are synonymous. He mm -hmm. said, You got a mind, and right. what happens in your mind mm -hmm. is to tell you about something about spirit right. that you can't perceive. But every last one of us got a mind. Whether we in a right mind or not, we got a mind. Mm -hmm. And we always be talking about how we daydream. We could be sitting oh, up in class yes. and it's right. just so easy. You be, yes, God. yes, yes. And the next thing you know, mm -hmm. you are, are, are <laughs> tracing your steps back mm -hmm. to see if you turn the iron off. And Yahweh yeah, got that mm -hmm. fixed because mm -hmm. now he got them eyes that I cut the shells off. off. <laughs> I said, Yahweh, now if you can Did 
you turn the on mm -hmm. off? Did you close the back door? Did you this and mm -hmm. did you that? And then this is what we do. We castigate ourselves. Talk. Oh, yes. There's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I can't keep my mind on you. We start to beating ourselves up as if we had the power to take our mind somewhere. Ooh. So he was saying that that mind going those places. Your and this, there was a song. Your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. He's saying that that mind being able to travel anywhere in a split second is like spirit. Mm -hmm. Breathe. When the astral man was So you've not, got a man that can be, in, that is within mm -hmm. a physical body. Yes. This is a hus that carries your astral or your spiritual man. And that is the one that Yahweh deals with. Mm. That's the one, like when he uh, on the road to on the road, and we'll use this one. But on the road to Damascus, uh, not yeah. Saul down, Saul, Saul, why mm -hmm. persecutest thou mm -hmm. me? And Saul talks about he was taken up into the third heaven. Right. Saw Saul things. things that was unlawful for a man yeah. to utter. What what that means is what he was shown just opened up to him. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> then you try to capsulize it and put it into words so that you can express it to lesser beings. And you, and you ain't got words for it. That's why he says unlawful for a man to utter. <laughs> so, and then he tells you, he said, were they in the body? He said, I knew a man about, what, 13 years ago or something? Were they in the body, out the body? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You have them same kind of, and I had talked about this with the elders. I say, because it's something that we never really, maybe in other regions, but we never really talked about is that it's more to this teaching than just rote conversation. Right. It is mm. the opportunity that Yahweh takes you while your body is standing here and your mouth is flapping. Your astral man has gone somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He has taken you mm -hmm. to the realm of eternity where there is no time. Right. It is all happening now. Mm -hmm. You could be standing up here talking about Elijah and the next thing you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you are looking out of Elijah's eyes the prophets of Baal. You ain't talking about what you read in the book. You're talking about live action. Mm -hmm. And you are giving a play by play of them heathens out there howling and screaming right. and hooping and jumping on the altar and Elijah and balking them. Why? Because you're inside. It's just one eternal spirit. He's mm -hmm. just emerged you mm -hmm. and shown you that. That's, that's what it is when you call down fire. Mm -hmm. That's why he has laid down a runway for you to get off so your little plane can take off. Right? <laughs> Gotta have a runway. <laughs> Everybody in Harriet jump jet. No. Read. When the astral man was out of the body. The astral man was what? Out, out of the out body. Out of the body. That's what was caught up onto Yahweh. Moses' astral body. Dr. Kinley's astral body. John the Revelator's astral body. Read. That we wish to pass on to other seekers after the truth mm -hmm. by the intangible divine pattern of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. that, mm. How are we going to do this to the astral man? By the tabernacle pattern. Mm -hmm. Read. This divine pattern is this, this, this man-made pattern. Divine. It's a divine. It's heavenly. From heaven itself. Yeah. Read. Which was first shown to Moses. It was first oh, shown yeah. to Moses. In 1490 BBY. In 1490 BBY, Moses goes up into the movie theater and sees the tabernacle. Read. Before the birth of Yahshua mm -hmm. and revealed in this age of the writer. And then revealed in the age of this writer. And I said it like that because... See, we, we deal in linear time, just like right here. Yeah, yeah. That 1490, right here, 1490, Moses saw it. And then A.D. 96, coming over to this age, the present kingdom age, John saw it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like a, 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 a held over. You know, th this was the first showing. Mm -hmm. Then this is the second, second showing. showing. And then Dr. Kelly showing. in 1931, that was the third and the last showing. No, you can't even, you, your words can't even describe it. That's why he said he was there when Moses was called up. Right. So that means that 
what Moses saw, he saw. Right. One showing. One showing in the movie. Mm -hmm. John on the Isle of Patmos, when he hit up in there, he was seeing the one showing of the movie. That's why I could, John could talk about, I, and, then, and we describe it like this, John saying, I heard behind me the sound mm -hmm. of many yes. water. What, turn around. Turn around. He's turn turning around, around so he can see, see the vision coming on down. It's just one showing of it. Mm -hmm. When you are caught up in the realm of eternity, that's, that's what we mean by it's all happening now. Right. Read. Hmm. Yahweh Elohim for new. For he what? For, for new. Hmm. That's incomprehensible to us. And yeah. it's all right. Because Yahweh is incomprehensible, inscrutable, indiscernible. Yahweh did what? Yahweh Elohim for new. That means new before. <laughs> Plan. The vessel advanced. talked about wasn't Moses everything. Mm -hmm. For Moses was written out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now this is what is incomprehensible. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. He foreknew it for. See, we capsulize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He foreplanned it with Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, eight souls were saved. He gave. He, he said who the eight were. That's all that was on board. Was that yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, with Abraham. Now you know, and, and we rejoice in those stories where it said mm -hmm. Abraham. Uh, 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 he had been given a promise that, that great things was going to happen to him through his offspring. Right. When, it, when as yet Abraham didn't have a child. See, that's right. the same thing back over here when he was telling Noah, yeah. your sons and your right. sons' wives, he right. didn't have Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Right. So here's Abraham, I'm going to bless all nations through your mm -hmm. seed. And he, ain't, he can't go home he and say, none. little boy, it's going to be through you. He had none. That's why he planned, let's make a deal. Mm -hmm. Let's take Eleazar, my servant. Let him walk. But he said, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be one born in your own house. Then he mm -hmm. then he go and get Isaac after the flesh, and then say, "Oh, that I uh, uh, Ishmael, Ishmael, Ishmael may walk yeah, yeah, before yeah. before you." He said, "No, yeah. no." He pinned it down. He said, "Of the of the married wife," and so that you know. It was a child of promise mm -hmm. because it came forth from the dead of Sarah's womb. To let you know that you didn't, this was a child I gave you. Right. Not by the will of your own flesh and certainly not by the deadness of Sarah's womb. Right. And it was talking about Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That seed mm -hmm. that had been promised from the realm right. of eternity. Foreknew. We can mm -hmm. say how he foreknew and foreplanned all of this. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel were going according to a tabernacle pattern before there was a tabernacle pattern pitched in the mm -hmm. wilderness. Foreknew. Foreknew, right. foreknew, foreknew. The brother's <laughs> talking about a gallbladder. Well, there was a gallbladder on Adam before there was a physical tabernacle pitched <laughs> here in the wilderness. Foreknew, foreknew, foreknew. Mm -hmm. But we know that Elohim is truly the archetype. Yes. But we can say how all this, all of this cannot escape the pattern. No. But when we step back, we think we done escaped it. Hmm. Absolutely hmm. nothing escapes the pattern. And that's why it's incomprehensible for us mm -hmm. that he could foreknow. Mm -hmm. And what's the rest of it? Planned? Oh, haphazard. Planned. Mm -hmm. See, because when we put it on us, there's a saying, the best laid plans of right. mice and men mm -hmm. often go astray. astray. Sometimes the things say awry. <laughs> I'm going to use both of them because mm -hmm. we can get twisted up. Yeah. It doesn't say astray, it say awry. <laughs> Whatever it is, the best laid of your plans ain't yeah. going to work. Right. They're right. not going to work. Read. Planned in advance. Planned mm -hmm. halfway through. In, in advance. advance. We, we are patchwork people. Yeah. And Yahweh got us like that because that's that uh, in all of that patchwork of our plans that go awry, then that's why we have to holler my Yahoshua because Yahweh's plans don't go awry. Mm -hmm. We can say, we're going <laughs> to, my boy Cat Williams, we're going to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't. <laughs> and then we have to surrender. Yeah. And then we realize Yahweh didn't have to do that. <laughs> For new and plan yeah. in advance. When he stepped out as Yahweh Elohim, that is the first 
born or first cause mm -hmm. of all creation that was masterminded mm -hmm. in the realm of eternity. So in that shape and form, he ain't hodgepodge. Mm -hmm. He's on he's on playback mode. He is executing the will of the Father. Right. And you got that self-same thing in genetics. You got the DNA. You got yeah. the parent substance. Mm -hmm. The parent substance does not leave the nucleus. It says it's too big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about Yahweh, this pure spirit, high and off this state. Mm -hmm. So what does it do? It takes D uh, takes R -N -A. R -N -A. Yeah. and R N A can come forth from the nucleus of the cell and bring forth a creation. But the R N A is an impressed image of the DNA. So what does it do? It carries out the express will of the Father. Whatever was impressed in DNA just takes on a shape and a form mm -hmm. as RNA and comes on out mm -hmm. that nucleus and gets with ribosome, mm -hmm. a rib, mm -hmm. and some is a body, mm -hmm. and brings forth a creation. Mm -hmm. For new, mm -hmm. for planned mm -hmm. in advance, read, mm -hmm. each detail Some. Of each. Song. each. Each do we detail. need to do like, like we did with how? Each. <laughs> Don't leave out nothing. It's each. Read each detail of the universe. Each detail of the, the universe. The, the big oh, and the small the the of the universe. Read mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. to the finite. Oh, now see, all we can get real big. All the planets in their orbits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and, and yeah. you talking about. Uh, I, I think uh, Rodney jokes about after he had attended a few classes, I gave him that white book that talked about, that was put out by, a doc, uh, was written Yahweh through Dr. Lejeune, Lejeune Gill in Springfield. The universe patterns according to Yahweh. Uh, so we can look at the nine planets in the solar system and mm. put it right on the tabernacle pattern. See, that's the mm. that's the heavenly mm -hmm. and Jupiter and Saturn and Jupiter, yeah. the, the king of the planets, mm. pointed to Yahshua the Messiah yeah. and got that, what that vessel say, he wasn't pierced in the groin. Mm -hmm. No, the spot on Jupiter side. ain't down here no, in the lower the hemisphere, side. it's in the side. Yeah, right it's like, it's oh, oh my Yahoshua, I believe. Yeah. So we look at the heavens. But then he bring it down to mm -hmm. you in your secret place. Mm -hmm. He said, even what? Even to the finite. Even to the finite. He didn't say infinite. Because mm -hmm. see, you're going to give up sometimes on trying to figure out how to be happy. Read. Even to the I tell you, I, I show you, I show you how it's fine. I go somewhere to my, well, you, your mind, it is, it is, it is. so uh, you get to the end of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my boy, <laughs> I can't even, can't even think of his name. Um, the comedian, he used to do be with Billy Crystal. Uh, oh, goodness. Anyway, I, I put his name down there when it comes to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, hung himself. Uh, Robin he, Williams? Robin Williams. Yeah. Oh, my boy. Mm. Yes, he did. Robin Williams. I mean, he was making movies. He wanted to shift from being a comedian to doing drama. And he, he did, did that. He did it. He did <laughs> that. Oscar. No, and then you he was suffering from depression. And he this no, that was a mind mm -hmm. that had reached the end. What is it? If there's an end, that's finite. And you feel somebody <laughs> that's rich and, and can do all of that mm -hmm. and they ain't happy Something to the extent. That they kill themselves? That shows you that a man got an end mm -hmm. of him trying to explore out yeah. on how to make himself happy. We always talking about, oh, well, why would rich people do this and do that? It's because they mind and reach the end of trying to make themselves happy. Mm -hmm. Yahweh showing you that it's a cutoff point. Because mm -hmm. the only thing that can really make you happy is that, and all is pofo. You know what our parents are. Honey, money don't make you happy. Oh, it made it. It don't, mm -hmm. but you know, yeah. it, 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 <laughs> without it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see for myself. I want to see for myself. Oh yeah, it's, it's some 
when you when you can ride when you can ride fat, boy, you got to you got the essence and the origin. You can say, oh, y'all just landed in L.A. Oh, y'all going to the, oh hey, call for me a ticket. Oh man, otherwise you never. Oh, can I get a bus? Can I get a few dollars? It's a difference in how you roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three. Even to the finite meandering. Meandering, just just. Mm -hmm. Of the mind. Uh, uh, and, and, and I likened it unto this ooh, years ago. Um, this guy, George, um, and he, uh, he has a book about famous people, mm -hmm. uh, African Americans, and he had a session I went to, uh, and uh, he was saying, simple, what would make you happy? Right. And the, the and, and what would make you happy? Visualize it. And we just sat up there quiet for a while and visualized it. He said, now, I want you to now visualize and start writing down what prevents you from having that happiness or having that accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And we would just write this stuff and we would come up to him and we think, you know, he said, no, go back and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then all while you writing and stuff, some people go up there. He say, "Yeah, you can go." You know, we want new one. Wait a minute, yeah, what's the answer? What, what, you, what is that? What is the answer? The answer was mm -hmm. when you stop blaming spouse, my children, how my parents raised me. Mm. These people on my job don't want me to get ahead. Mm -hmm. If I had a better house, if I had a better car, if I had better health, if I was tall, if I was white, if I was black, if I was beautiful, if I had long hair, if I had all of that carnal stuff that we said hindered us from being happy. When you took all of that other isms and stuff out, it was just you and happiness. I said, look at here. I couldn't wait to run because I, I only go to seminars where there's classes so I can <laughs> run down and share, you know, that all of this stuff that does hinder us from seeing Yahweh as he really is and actually exists is the carnal trash that's still in our minds. Mm. Now go back where uh, I'm still on um, the, even the meanderings. Mm -hmm. Even to the finite meanderings of the mind of man. The mind of man in search of happiness. Mm -hmm. We'll take this job. I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> or that job. We'll, <laughs> my, my, some of my friends say, oh, you had a nice house. Then they saw this one. And they said, oh, you even got a bigger one. <laughs> but it's a, it's a running joke. Uh, they say that. Somebody will have a car, a nice car, and they'll take the car to the dealership to trade it in. And the salesman say, what's wrong with the car? They say, the ashtray's full. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a thing. Yeah, it's a joke, right, you know. Right. So, well, what happened to your other house? I say, all the closets and every storage space was full. Mm -hmm. So somebody said, well, you, I said, yeah, I'm looking for another house. <laughs> they say, what? I said, well, every closet and every storage space is full. Just full of closing my eye and putting that stuff in a bag. But it's like you just constantly, constantly, constantly and see that's how we then end up upside down in debt trying to pursue something mm -hmm. physical to mm -hmm. make us happy and the only thing that can make us so if you want to be happy for the rest of your life right. is having Yahshua the Messiah mm -hmm. within as Burbank Mitchell say uh, artesian well just flows up within mm -hmm. you just say evermore that woman say evermore give us something to drink <laughs> so that water well spring out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water mm -hmm. read even the finite meanderings mm -hmm. of the mind of man in search of happiness mm -hmm. by this intangible pattern. Ooh, that's, that's talking about this one. This mm -hmm. intangible, mm -hmm. can't touch it, pattern. Read. By this intangible pattern was the first physical tabernacle built in See, the wilderness. He said, uh, uh, look that thou make it. According yeah, to the pattern that was Show shown thee where? In the mouth. In the mouth. In the mouth. And the, I'm going to cut there. And the vessel mm -hmm. was talking about uh, with, with the gallbladder and the liver. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first 
See, back in the day, we used to memorize the stuff. That was one of the first things that I memorized, mm. was that the digestive tract mirrors migratory. the migratory mm. tract. Right. And how that, you had a famine mm. in the land. Mm -hmm. Well, what is a famine? That's, that's a shortage. That's hunger. Right. You had a famine in the time of... Abraham. That was your first family. And didn't Abraham and his offspring go down into Egypt? Because mm -hmm. they say Pharaoh saw Sarah mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> thought she was cutting a good figure. <laughs> Abraham said, look, uh, you tell him that, you know, I might, I might be sister. Yeah, yeah, sister. Okay, so when he came up out of there, he came up with riches from the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he goes back into Canaan. That's one famine. Then you have a famine in the time of Isaac. Mm -hmm. Isaac knew the drill. So he gets ready to go down in the land of Egypt. Yahweh cuts him off. He just goes as far as you would say. Uh, 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 I, I don't know exactly where it was. I think, but I think he's over there with Abimelech or whoever. And, and it's the same kind of situation. And then he goes back to Canaan's land. Then in the time of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, you have your third and last great famine. And they got to go down mm. in the land of Egypt. Well, what is all that about? Mm. When, <laughs> when you, your, your stomach growls, Ooh, yeah. but it's your brain that says, your brain starts <laughs> reconnoitering. Oh, it's 12.45, and I haven't eaten anything. Mm. Uh, oh, it, oh it, uh, it starts putting it, taking on a shape and a form from a growl to, well, when is my next meal? <laughs> right. Okay? So, it registers here. Yes. And we used to say, now, you don't take a plate of food <laughs> and say, oh, it is lunchtime, and just set the plate of food on your head and walk around to my, ooh. Oh, my soul has delighted itself in fat. <laughs> no, uh-uh. You got to take that food and you got to put it in. Mm -hmm. And that food has to do what you chew it. And that Medication. starts breaking it down. Mm -hmm. And it goes down. And it goes to the stomach. So what had to happen? Abraham, didn't he have to mm -hmm. go down? Mm -hmm. Isaac was cut off. So some people talking about, I don't even know. And it's three families like you should have wow. three meals a day. And so I, I skipped day. some. Well, Isaac did too. He didn't go all the way down. So if you want to skip meal, there you skip meal. But it's three times a day. Yeah. Breakfast. We say breakfast, but it's breakfast. break fast. Because mm -hmm. all night long you have fasted. You haven't eaten. Mm -hmm. So that's Abraham. Then you got the middle of the day. That's Isaac family. And then the family of the children of Israel. That's the last one. And here they go down there. And they are held in bondage for a period of time. Mm -hmm. so the vessel was saying, well, they're getting the acid treatment even, even in yeah. the stomach. Because that's what you taste yeah. when that, you know, you know, I don't need to be uh, um, a graphic about it. Right. Um, and they used to, they used to say bile. Because sometimes the old folk would say, oh, girl, I just feel a little bilious. Well, bilious, the root word is bile. <laughs> and they had a pill that they would send you around to the sundry. We talked about that. Yeah, the sundry right. store. <laughs> and get me some Carter's Little Liver Pills. And that was supposed to help that bilious taste. And they had Carter's all up until I was a child. And then a lot of those things that our parents took, you know, then they quietly say, well, yeah, a big bile is associated with the liver, but the Carter's little liver pills really didn't do anything for it. Mm -hmm. But the point was we grew up knowing mm -hmm. bile is associated with that liver. Mm -hmm. But now... The children of Israel, they got an acid that is secreted. Yeah. They're in bondage in the stomach. Mm -hmm. And they are held in bondage. I'm going to put the graphic up, but they are held in bondage. Right. And right. then what, uh, go to Exodus, the third chapter. Um, where it says, I have, I have heard, I've seen. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, Exodus 3 and 7. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, mm -hmm. I have surely seen. This is at the seen. burning bush. Mm -hmm. I have surely seen the read. affliction of my people which are in Egypt uh -huh. and have heard their cry by reason now of their Now we figured master. seen was like this. He, he <laughs> on high. Looking low. Yeah, like, like we see when we see Perseus and all the oh, movies yeah. and stuff. That it's Zeus, Zeus, Zeus the yeah. Zeus and the Pantheon right. up in the clouds. Talking about, yeah, that your boy, you know, he be sneaking around, he, he, he's been knocked down, he's standing back up and stuff. That's that's the way we perceive that God was up there looking, I've seen the afflictions, mm -hmm. and I've what, I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Now here come the clincher that Darwin would say, read. For I know their sorrow. I know their sorrow. Mm -hmm. We had somebody <coughs> passed in, uh, somebody's husband passed in class. And they had asked me, was I going to speak to him? I said, no. You all can carry my sympathy, but I want some of you married women to talk with her. Because you, you can yeah. say, I understand. I, because I have a spouse. And I know what it would be to not have that spouse. I can't say that. That'd be facetious for me to come and tell them, I know what you're going through. No. And, and, and we used to tell people, and that'd be so... Girl, I know what you're going through. You ain't never lost a job. Mm. You know, and we, but, but we say, ah, yeah, I know what you're going through. Uh, Darwin used to say, uh, you can't really appreciate a toothache until you have one. You see somebody right. like you tell me, ooh, I know what you're going yeah. through. Why? Because you have firsthand yeah. knowledge yeah. and experience. Yeah. So get him out the sky yeah. that he was looking and he heard because they was crying. He said, I know their sorrow. Why? Because he's down there walking among mm -hmm. us. And I think about that TV show, What if God Was One of Us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah he was right there. Now, yes. how do you, how do you, since you say, uh, jot and tittle, put it on, how do you know? Because nothing Yahshua did was to institute. No. We'll agree with that. Nothing. Everything he did was, was to fulfill right. what was written in the law and the, the prophets. prophets. Okay? Was he whipped? Yes. yes. Was he among them? Because yes. John said in the beginning was the word, the word was with Yahweh, the word was Yahweh, and the word became flesh. He came unto his own. own. So he was down yeah. there with, with his own. So that means that at least one other time, mm -hmm. Yahweh had to be down mm -hmm. there with, with his them. own. Mm -hmm. Was he whipped? Then that means that at least one other time, Yahweh had to be down there mm -hmm. with his own and mm -hmm. was whipped. Mm -hmm. If Yahshua the Messiah was whipped. Mm. That's who that was. Yahshua the son of none. I know their sorrow. Read. And I am come down get to out, deliver get him out, them. Get him out. Get him out. He's come down mm -hmm. to deliver. Now, you got this. It's time for the deliverance. They had been down there crying. Right. They had yeah. been down there. And we talk about when we want to get polytechnical, it says that uh, he was 30 years old. He, he would have put he appeared. Oh, anyway. There was a period of time that he was down there mm -hmm. walking among them. Mm -hmm. His appearance did not trigger an immediate deliverance. He was down there a period of time with right. them until the stopwatch got round to uh, the 400 or 430 years after the promise was given. Now it's time. Mm -hmm. And they come out here to the Red Sea. And there's, uh, now you know the man had to have a vision. Mm -hmm. Mountains. And pyramids. Folk, do you know they don't never show no mountains in Egypt? They don't never no, show no mountains no. in Egypt. They'll show a pyramid. pyramid. This man said it was mountains mm -hmm. and pyramids mm -hmm. that had got them bottled up and they coming down there on the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his host coming up behind them. And they down there hollering about, uh, it wasn't enough graves in Egypt. You know, brought us out mm -hmm. here in the wilderness to die. All that turmoil and upset at mm -hmm. the Red Sea. And what? Uh, Joshua says, Why far thy cries unto me? Hold your rod out over the Red Sea right. and what the Red Sea tunnel up. Right. If you've ever eaten anything, as the old folks say, that didn't agree with you, it ain't got but two ways to go. Right. It's going to come up and out. Or it's going to go through. Right. Mm. So, and you can't lay there and massage your stomach <laughs> to make it go through. 
a signal has to come from on high, the brain that's representing crying under Yahweh. And he opened up that pylorus and that food passes from the stomach into the intestinal tract. Now we know it's reversed because the stomach and then the intestinal tract. But your stomach uh, through the Red Sea into the intestinal tract. Now, when it passes from the pylorus, that first little area mm -hmm. that it comes to is called the duodenum. Mm -hmm. Duo meaning two, two. Mm -hmm. and denim yeah. meaning ten. Mm -hmm. Two and ten all day it's is twelve. Old oh, oh, Madeline, whatever, all bright or something. Uh, the children of Israel, Yahweh fixed her. The children, the, the head of the atheists, yeah. the children of Israel mm -hmm. couldn't have come through the divided waters of no Red Sea. No twelve tribes came through there and they couldn't have <laughs> came through five abreast. Yo, Yahweh, Yahweh, <laughs> Yahweh you, you think Yahweh did something yeah. to that? Yeah. See what he be doing these people be bad mouthing. Mm -hmm. uh, 12, you got the duo <coughs> denim, mm -hmm. 12, mm -hmm. picking up the 12 right. tribes mm -hmm. that came through the divided waters of the Red Sea. Over here with Yahshua the Messiah, if the steps of a righteous man are ordered, mm -hmm. uh, the, prophet, the prophet says, out of Egypt, you see, you got to do an overlay. Right. Out of Egypt have I called oh, my, my son. Now, when you say my son, you think about what? Yahshua. Yahshua. Right. But he was talking about Israel, mm -hmm. the 12 tribes represented the my son. Mm -hmm. So when he was down there hiding with his parents in Egypt at 12, he called forth mm -hmm. his son right. out of Egypt, just like he called forth them 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua the Messiah comes mm -hmm. forth out of Egypt mm -hmm. at the age of 12. Uh -huh. Not 13, not yeah. 22, at the Absolutely. age of 12. Wow. And they come out here to the red, uh, come out here to the wilderness mm -hmm. of Sinai. Uh, old Joseph, um, Yahshua the Messiah says, uh, no man goes to the Father, what? But, but by, by me. me. Mm -hmm. Okay, with, uh, he ain't even on here. Uh, but with Joseph, if you wanted to eat, you, you couldn't yeah, eat if you didn't what? Come by Joseph. Wow. Right. The children of Israel, Yahweh had, had promised Moses. Mm -hmm. He said, when? Thou, Bring not if, mm -hmm. when thou hast brought forth the children, he told them, for no mm -hmm. for plan. Mm -hmm. right. When you bring them out, you're going to mm -hmm. worship me here. 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 At now. the X marks the spot. Come mm -hmm. right back to this spot that you say had this uh, vision at, mm -hmm. and you're going to worship me there. So here they gather, and there's a mountain there. Mm -hmm. Every last one of them children of Israel had to be by Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. someone that you got to come by, Yahshua. Yahshua the Messiah. That don't mean just come by, hey, I know it's Yahshua. No, right, right, this, this right. time this by mean this is the entrance way. Yeah. So you got them out here, and there's a mountain, Mount Sinai. The vessel talked about that um, the liver that looks like a triangular mass. You don't have to take our word for it. Watch any of them CSI shows. Mm -hmm. Even Game of Thrones. I mean, you just went, you without excuse. <laughs> I thought I thought I'd pass out. When the man was talking about, oh, he was a heavy drinker. Now, when you think about drinking, you think about cirrhosis of what? Liver. And he gave and he gave that old fat boy, big old liver, the boy put it up there on the scale. So everywhere you see, you see that liver is a big mass. It's a big triangular mass. Okay? And it's got two lesser lobes and two prominent lobes, but one lobe is the biggest lobe. Okay, well, think about the people that went up here on my Sinai, the prominent people, because yeah. uh, we don't know who was in the 70 elders except one of them, her. <laughs> so that means 69, we don't know. Right. But we know that uh, Aaron, who was, uh, who we got Moses, who was, who was Yahweh's minister, and then his brother Aaron, who would in turn become the high priest. That's your first. Mm -hmm. Moses, the biggest lobe, then Aaron, the little lesser one. Mm -hmm. And then who? Nadab and, and Abihu, your two low priests, them the, them the two lower lobes, showing you that absolutely nothing escapes that intangible tabernacle pattern. And Vessel talked about it. What's on the back side of Mount Sinai? Mm -hmm. that, that burning bush. Mm -hmm. 
So here you got them coming. And what comes down from Mount Sinai, that law came down. And the children of Israel was cutting up out there, and he threw that, threw that law down on them and broke it. That law was to govern them or to control them. So what happens? That bile comes down from the liver, stored for a while in the gallbladder, and then released into the intestinal tract and further humbles mm -hmm. and bows down that food <laughs> to make it suitable, suitable. and usable. Mm -hmm. And there is a separation that goes on. Didn't he have to separate them after that? Right. Make it to the golden calf. He said, yeah. all of them on this side, all of them on right. that side. Boom. And, and that wasn't all the separating because it ain't just one separation and it comes right. out. It's a constant uh, separation that goes on in the small intestinal tract. Uh, and, and absorbing back the, uh, the, the nutrients. So you have uh, that, that time when they said, Moses, you take too much upon Moses yourself. Mm -hmm. We are all holy. Right. And then he said, yeah, go okay. on up there. They go, they go marching up there to the tabernacle with they, with they, uh, with they censors. And the only thing left was a censor. That was a separation. <laughs> the assumption. <laughs> and then it would seem like them that was in the camp that heard about it, it was still some rebellion there. Yeah. And, yeah, and Moses said, now look now, if, if these men, I'm paraphrasing, yeah, these men death. died a common death mm -hmm. like everybody else died, mm -hmm. stuck toe infection, uh, 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 old age, heart attack, yes. you know, uh, then Yahweh didn't send me, right. but if Yahweh do something, they yeah. never did before, you know, <laughs> Yahweh sent me, and right. they said the ground over oh, them, see, that's a separating, a separating, a separating, oh, Yahshua man. the Messiah, separating that shaft from the wheat, yes. so hopefully we the wheat, we done got away from the shaft. <laughs> So then what do you have? You have three, and I always get them wrong, you have three ingredients that are drawn across the villi of the intestinal tract. How many went across? We know it's 144,000 went across, but uh, of those that were down here in the mm -hmm. land of Egypt, mm -hmm. that were 30 years and upwards when they went over here, you got uh, Caleb, Eleazar, and Yahshua, Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now I know in some places in the archetype it'll count it the other way because it won't count uh, Yahshua to count right. Phineas. Phineas right. But Phineas is Eleazar's son so he would have been too too young for that count. Mm -hmm. So it's Yahshua was 30 when he crossed mm -hmm. and the other boys was 30 or mm -hmm. upwards when mm -hmm. they crossed mm -hmm. and they were the only ones that went over. Mm -hmm. Yahshua the son of Nun, Caleb and, and, and Eleazar, mm -hmm. like those three ingredients. And mm -hmm. Yahweh said, I'm going I'm to take you to a land flowing with what? Milk, Milk and, and honey. honey. And it says that when you go through the digestive process, your blood gets thicker after mm -hmm. it absorbs those ingredients. Mm -hmm. It changes from a, now this is this medicine, a watery consistency to a milky consistency mm -hmm. and the simple sugars that are now absorbed in the bloodstream give it a more sweeter taste. That's mm -hmm. the land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. We okay. only learn these things mm -hmm. because Yahweh has made a visitation. With those mm -hmm. words, I thank you. Hallelujah. session for today. Let us stand for the doxology. Our doxology is taken from Jude verse uh, 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim our Savior through Yahshua the Messiah our Sovereign belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.